Handling gives us a chance for a live stat update brought to you by UNH Analytics and Data Science. Now shots in the second period, 10 to 2 for Miami. Big stat. And that live stat update brought to you by UNH Analytics and Data Science. Apply now and prepare yourself for one of the world's most in-demand careers. Find out more at unh.edu slash analytics. Face off in the UNH D zone to the left of Robinson. Puck in the near corner. Wise will try to force it up the wall for Crookshank. Can't get around a Bachman forecheck. Now it lifts high in the air and bounces to center ice. Mahalik there ahead of Esposito. Gilling. Gilling moves into the zone, but Crookshank lifts his stick, takes it away. Ahead to Esposito. He leads Vela. Backhand shot wide. It's behind the net. And Miami will come out near side. Gildon doing his best to keep it in the zone, but it's Bachman stopped by a barrier at the Wildcat line. Gildon will stick handle out of his own zone. Leads the break the other way. Miller, right side. Wrist shot, glove down, and then a stoppage. The whistle came pretty quick. <laughs> yeah, very quick. Uh, yeah, there's anticipation on that call. <laughs> As uh, Gravelis, uh, he, uh, historical figure wearing the zebras in the hockey east. I think he's been with uh, the league for 25, at least 25 years. A little quick on that whistle there, Mr. Gravelis. And, and he owned up to it. He went over, yeah. got a hug from Jordan Uhelski. He says, hey, we've all been there. <laughs> Not sure the Wildcats were as thrilled, but Mr. Gravelisi has plenty of respect in the Wildcat locker room. His son, Matt Gravelisi, second year student manager of the Wildcats. That's an outstanding job along with Sam Finn. Miller at the Wildcat line, able to chip it just beyond Melnick's reach to the center zone. Melnick goes down. Miller gets the puck to Boyd far boards. Miller to Van Riemsdyk and back to Boyd. Miami had peeled off. Now they come a little more aggressively in this 1-1 game. 6.45 remaining second period. Barrier using the wall to get it at Van Riemsdyk. Loose at center. McAdams chips it into the Miami zone only to see Gruden skate away with it. Gruden at the end of his shift will play it behind the Wildcat net. Green and Verrier converge at the end boards along with McAdams and Boyd and there's a call coming up against Miami. So the Wildcats will go on the power play at the 13-37 mark of the second period. Yeah, roughing's going to be the call to Gordy Green. Only 5'8 out of Ann Arbor, Michigan. Escaped the clutches of the University of Michigan. And he's going to sit down for a couple of minutes. So good opportunity here as Miami really had quite the flow of the game going towards the Wildcats here in the second period. You know, a lot of it came uh, as they started the period with two power plays, but they kind of kept it up, kept it going towards Mike Robinson and the Wildcat net. But now a chance for the Wildcats to establish some momentum. It is a Unitil power play, Unitil energy for life. Blackburn and Lown both go down, anticipating a puck drop that never came. To the left of Uhelski will have Crookshank win the draw. Back to Grasso, right point. Gildon near point. Grasso again, far side. Gildon will backhand it for Blackburn. Extra pass, Grasso, shot save as Grasso had a bid from the inner part of the right circle. Grasso has it at the half boards. Down low looking for Nazarian. Instead, it's played out to the point, but unable to keep in was Gildano back it out. 1-1, under six minutes left in the second period. Wildcats led last night 1-0 and 2-1. Trailed 3-2 before he finished in a 3-3 tie. Tonight it was Miami which struck first. Wildcats looking for their first lead. It's Gildano. High slot, Crookshank. Grasso right side in the corner. Russell's over there. Fort and Hutton, two defensemen for Miami. Trying to pin the Wildcats along the far wall. Huck squirts out to Gildon, right point. Moves to the center, shoots, redirect on Nazarian. Tried to redirect, but it gets all the way through, and then is held by Uhelski. All right, Miami making the Wildcats work extra hard to get that opening to get the puck in on the Miami net. And they finally do from out at the point. Aaron Nazarian willing to risk it all going into that lion's den right in front of the goaltender. No rebound left for the Wildcat sniper. Patrick Grasso got off a good bid just a minute ago. What does Patrick have to do to get a goal? He's been shooting from everywhere this weekend. He'll get it. He'll keep working. All right, Van Riemsdyk off the faceoff back to Wise. Boyd, right point. Plays off the kick plate on those boards for Van Riemsdyk. He stations himself at the half wall. 
Shovels it back to Boyd. Boyd will try the left wing, Miller. Out to Boyd. Wise to Van Riemsdyk. At the hash marks, Van Riemsdyk, top of the circle, looking for Bella and a redirect. But that one also finds its way right to Uhelski with exactly five minutes left in the second, 38 seconds remaining on the Inutil power play. And this time Vela was the one in the lion's den, but he found uh, no tidbits there to scrape home. Chris Miller flying in there as well. Miller buying, uh, vying for my all 517. <laughs> Trying to go when in you there release with the big that? boys. That's one of my favorite days of the year. <laughs> It'll be March this year. All right, we look forward to that. Robinson slows it down for Boyd after Miami had cleared. Wise will skate in left side. Good pass in the left circle of Vela. Vela reverses it back to the point. Boyd. Patient power play. Boyd top of the umbrella to Miller. Across to the right wing. Wise. Wise and Boyd. Switch spots. Miller controls top of the left circle. Straight away, Boyd shoots, save, rebound, batted around in a little slot area. Van Riemsdyk and Bella both took a chop at it. Bachman, though, will skate out with it as Miami has successfully killed off the penalty. Yeah, the five, well, Wildcats finally got a rebound off a shot from the point, uh, but it just didn't bounce the Wildcats' way. So it's 1-1, 4.05 remaining second period. No one has struck here in this middle frame, but Miami looking for it. Gruden controls from the left goal line, threw one off the side of the uh, pipe. Back out, it comes to Melnick, a quick wrister from the left circle. That's wide. Green behind the net, played it in front, but it was out of Gruden's reach, taken away by the Wildcats. Miller to Joe Sacco. Sacco chips and chases into the far corner. Sidesteps the check of Dashke. And the puck is pressed along the far boards. Right side of the Wildcat zone, Sacco. Went after it, but it's Melnick who will skate out of harm's way, near side defensive circle. Ahead for Laval. Laval chips it forward, and then Gruden sends it to the rest of the way into the Wildcat near corner. Laval and Sacco collide right behind Robinson. Puck goes loose, far wall. Dawson backhands it up for Fregona. He finds Sato, and Sato's got room. Sato right side. He's got McKinnon to his left. Tries a backhand shot, but a save is made by Uhelski gliding over just outside his crease. Well, the Wildcats have found some space on the right wing side in this period to get it in the Miami zone. But for the most part, they haven't generated the shots on net until the last couple of minutes or so. They put, I think, three on net from that uh, right wing side after entering the zone. A few times the Wildcats have looked for passes across the crease and they just haven't connected. Cats win the faceoff. Gildon snaps one off on the right boards. It was going wide, but Uhelski just says, I'll take it anyway. And another good faceoff win. Wildcats welcome all of our listeners from Medtronic, a proud partner of Wildcat Sports. Medtronic, dedicated to developing technology that improves outcomes for doctors and their patients. Medtronic, further together. Off the faceoff, Cats win it again. Puck is crossed from right to left. Blackburn to the left wall. Grasso plays for Nazarian. Too far for him behind the goal line. Gildon backhands one to Grasso. Shoots one off the side of the net. Oh, ever so close, Patrick Grasso. At least he felt the net that time. Next one's going in. And this place will erupt. Meanwhile, Lown will skate in right side. He lost an edge. Gildon will take advantage. Headman feed Nazarian right side. Nazarian across the line. Drops for Blackburn. Here comes the trailer. Grasso, he shoots. Save is made. Rebound wise, plays it in front. Miami, though, is there. The takeaway for Dashke. And then Hutton will just clear the red line and dump it down. Oh, another good shift by Grasso. And shooting again, just can't find the net. 1-1, one, one. no one's found the back of the net in the second period. 2.05 remaining before the second intermission. Gildon from behind his own net. Esposito, he got knocked down, and Miami will take the puck away. It's Graham who delivered the hit, tries a wrist shot. Esposito got a stick in there, and it's out of play. 1.54 left in the second. 1-1 one, one our score. This is Wildcat Hockey from Learfield.
All right, guys, back to you. Wildcats win a defensive zone faceoff, and then Crookshank carries into the left corner of the offensive zone. He's got Melnick trailing him. Crookshank behind the net, surveys, patiently looking. He stick handles before finding Boyd. Boyd throws one in front, tipped by Vela, hit the far post. Crookshank gets back to it near side. Backhand to the barrier at the point. Across to Boyd. He'll backhand it deeper. Esposito gives chase on the four check. Vela behind the Miami net. Chopping at it, but Melnick will skate out to the far side for Miami in this 1-1 game. Taken right back in the neutral zone by Esposito. Esposito moves right up the middle. Backhand couldn't get enough on it. Ends up behind the net. Reclaims. Gives to Verrier left wing. Verrier threw one diagonally through. Gruden looking for the stretch pass, but getting in the way was Boyd. It was intended for Green. And here's a takeaway for Dashke, but he's offside with 55 seconds left in the period. Oh, good up and down action once again. I thought Miami was going to get a good break, but they did have a player locked into the zone. Perhaps that's why uh, the Wildcats were just a, a little slow to play the puck there. They knew the offside was coming. Anyway, it's been a very entertaining second period, even though we haven't had any goals on the board. Anthony Wise stick handles around to Laval check. Swing pass right side. Sacco. Sacco wrist one on net. And there's Uhelski again. I feel like, Pete, ever since you gave that live stat update, the shots have started to tilt back in the Wildcats' favor. Well, that's that's why you uh, threw the stat thing to me, because you knew it was going to go the other way, and that was the 11th shot in this period by the Wildcats. They now have an 11-10 advantage over Miami. Nine shots in a row by the Wildcats to round out this period. So there's another live stat update brought to you by UNH Analytics. Off the faceoff with 42 seconds remaining in the period. Wildcats control in the Miami zone. Nazarian, right corner. Wheels to the point, Gildon. Tried to throw it in, it got blocked and blocked out of play. Show your Wildcat pride, get the official debit card of the UNH Wildcats. Open your service credit union checking account at any branch, including the branch inside Wildcat Stadium, online or by phone 24-7. That's yeah, been a good end of the period for the Wildcats. Yes, uh, they've uh, put pressure what uh, appears to be kind of a tiring Red Hawk squad. They, they kind of gave it, uh, the red team gave it their all in the first half of this period, but since then it's been UNH. 30 seconds remaining in the period, and as I glance up, that Friends of UNH Hockey 50-50 pot, $933. We're getting close to $1,000 to someone tonight. Meanwhile, the puck bouncing around the blue paint of the Miami crease, but it's steered aside. Corbett to center ice. Hand off to Lown. Lown gains the line. Gives to Hawkinson. He whirls and fired one towards the net. It hit Lown, who chases it down to the corner. Final five seconds of the period. Hutton waits. Tries to play at the near boards. Gildon the intercept. He centers to Nazarian. And that is the end of the second period. As Pete says, a lot going on, but nothing going in. We were a 1-1 one, one after one. We stay 1-1 one, one through two periods at the Whittemore Center tonight. You're listening to Wildcat Hockey from Learfield.
Sports Network. This is UNH Wildcats Hockey. Brought to you by Service Credit Union. Home of the official debit card of the UNH Wildcats. And featuring a full service branch and ATM within Wildcat Stadium. Now, it's time for the third period on the Wildcats Sports Network. Glad you're with us here at the Whittemore Center tonight. UNH 1, Miami 1. Mike Murphy, Pete Webster, Kendra Middleton at the Whit, and Aaron Boss, as always, producing at our flagship home in Manchester, WGIR. Wherever you are along the network or on YouTube, we're glad you're with us tonight. We'll see what the Wildcats can do in the third. It's Grasso off the opening faceoff, flipping it into the right corner of the of Miami zone. Crowder will play it farther along to the far boards for the Red Hawks. And it's swatted in by Corbett. Forcing Wise back. Now Gildon lost it to Lown. Lown left side moves right in front. Dangerous spot, but a poke check brings it back to the near boards. Got to be very careful here. Lown is so quick. Grasso will gain the line for the Wildcats left wing. Nazarian measures one up and fires a blast. That's wide. And the rebound carries out to center. Boyd near defensive circle of his own end. Goes across the barrier. Wildcats playing tonight without Charlie Kelleher, without Benton Mass, both injured in last night's game. And they'll be reevaluated on Monday. Lower body injury for Charlie and upper body, left arm, based on the sling we see for Benton Mass. We're just over a minute into the third period. Melnick, good lead pass. And the extra pass goes to no one. Gordy Green had it right circle, was hoping Bachman was coming in, but he was a bit too soon on the delivery. Crookshank the other way blows a tire just as he entered Miami zone. This allows Melnick to take it away and leave it for Russell. Russell sidesteps Vela who slides into the corner. Melnick's pass too far for Green, but Green will chase after it. Bachman gets their first drop pass at the goal line extended for Green. Russell gets to the loose puck. Left circle. He threw one in front. Caught Boyd's skate. Ends up on the right boards. Right back on the stick of Hawkinson. Curls to the middle. Gives to Hutton for a one-timer. Broke his stick. And the puck ends up to Russell. Russell at the left hash marks. Will hand it to Bachman. Curls to the middle. His shot sails high off glass. Crookshank is actually the one who had a stick broken. And he dives at center ice to knock the puck to center. And Miami just waited and waited for Esposito to touch it. So it officially becomes a hand pass. Uh, I think that's going to come all the way back to the Wildcat end where the hand pass occurred. But, uh, boy, uh, both teams looking a little rough here to start the third. It's kind of like that in the second period, too, with loose pucks just kind of going a little too far and bouncing different ways, spinning with a fresh ice sheet. Guys falling down and kind of started the same way. And the Wildcats a little disorganized in the defensive end, but uh, blocking shots uh, continually. Off a face-off win. Bachman with a forehand that hits off the glass behind Robinson again. Puck at center ice. Miller has it. Van Riemsdyk stretches to keep on side. McAdams will chip it forward. Left goal line. Now he gets behind the net. Wraps around to the front. It's loose there. Battle with both Miller and McAdams going after it. Instead it comes the Van Riemsdyk right wing board. Dumped in deeper. McAdams in the corner. He's tied up by Gilling. And then Dashke takes Miller off the puck. Mahalik will chip it up the wall, but Gildon is there on the forward check. Throws one across behind Sato and two far in front of Wise, so it's broken up. Transition opportunity perhaps, but Miami at the end of a shift, so they back off, and this allows Sato to skate out through the neutral zone. He'll lift it off the end boards to the right of Uhelski. 1-1 game, three minutes into the third period. These teams skated to a 3-3 tie last night. At center, it's McKinnon. He'll send it right back in to Miami zone. Uhelski stops it behind his own goal. Johnson near boards left. The puck goes straight in the air thanks to Sacco getting a stick in there. And it's lifted right in front of Enrico Blasi, the Miami head coach. Thrown out to the far wall. Sato has it on his forehand. Shot was blocked off the stick of Crowder behind the net. Rimshaw will deliver it to Crowder. And a nice soft touch feathers the pass to center ice. Backhand, a one-hopper backhanded on net from center ice. That was a dangerous knuckleball as Soroki just threw it in there and forced a Robinson stop. 
Yeah, that's probably the best chance. Uh, here we go. Turnover for yeah, the Cats. Take away by Nazarian. Gives to Blackburn. He was aiming for the upper right corner. But Uhelski had other ideas as he snares it out of midair. Yeah, that's good. Uh, good glove hand by Uhelski. Blackburn looking for the weekend hat trick. Had a goal last night and one here tonight. He's denied, though. So Wildcats bidding to take their first lead of the evening. Aaron Nazarian set it all up with the takeaway just inside the Miami zone, but Blackburn couldn't finish it thanks to the fine glove of Uhelski. 16.08 left in regulation. 1-1 our score. How many tie games have we seen in the third period this year? Let's put it this way. If UMass isn't the opponent, just about all of them, it seems. Nazarian. Racing along the left wing boards, trying to get around Mahalik. He'll backhand it off the kick plate to the near side wall. But there's Blackburn for the Wildcats. Throws one toward the net. Mahalik the intercept. And he goes to the far side, Hawkinson. Hawkinson to Lown. Lown gains the line right wing. Goes around. Varrier, sharp angle shot. Caught the stick of Robinson on its way through. Dashkey at the half wall, left side. Wildcats will take it away with Grasso. He'll center for Varrier. And Varia will saucer one right behind Miami's goal, and the Wildcats will bring on the Vela line. Mahalik skating by Vela at center. Vela takes a chop at it. Can't take the puck away, so Mahalik will backhand it deep. Wise there. Had a pass deflected to the point. Here's a shot that goes just wide. Rebounds in front of the net. Thought Green would get to it. Instead, it's Rimshaw who sends one high. A couple of chances. It all started on this right point by Crowder. And a pass that goes errant forces Rimshaw back to center ice for the Red Hawks. Yeah, some good puck luck for the River uh, for the uh, Red Hawks. Pucks bouncing their way and taking big hacks at it to get it towards the net. Gruden loses it to Wise. Wise using his own goal to serve as a deterrent for the four checkers. He's got some speed at center. Leaves it for Esposito. Throws one off the glass behind Uhelski. Crookshank to it. Left boards. Carries it deep into the end, and he's upended by Crowder behind the cage. Helnick will backhand it in front of his own net, but there's Rimshaw. And now Green tries to saucer one through for Gruden. This will be an offside, though, with 14-23 remaining in the third period. 1-1 our score. The goals were scored in the first period. Josh Melnick at 10-28, assisted by Jonathan Gruden and Gordy Green. And then the power play goal from Liam Blackburn at 14-39, assisted by Brendan Van Riemsdyk. Well, definitely another low-scoring game for the Wildcats. They've had a lot of them this year, just haven't been able to get a huge offensive output. But uh, not uh, because of lack of effort. They've been in just about every game they have played. Even in that first UMass game, uh, the Cats were in it there uh, towards the end. Provided a little bit of excitement before UMass iced it. All right, face off to the right of Uhelski. Comes back for a one-time bid from McKinnon. Knocked down in the slot. And onto the stick of Laval. He'll bank it off the near boards behind the Wildcat net where McKinnon is there. Looking for Van Riemsdyk, but Laval stepped in. Miami controls. Russell, near point. Moves it up the wall. Gilling back to Hutton. He blasts one that's just wide. And then Robinson knocks the net off its pegs to bring a whistle with 13.59 remaining in this third period. Yeah, went back with his uh, right stick side to swat the putt back in his left skate. Knocked the goal off the mooring. We'll have a face off to his left. Now, both ten, uh, goaltenders have been very strong in this game. Jordan Uleski from Flint, Michigan, and Mike Robinson from Bedford, New Hampshire. The last five games UNH has played against anybody but UMass, they've gone to overtime. It's a pretty incredible yeah. streak. Yeah. Not looking to foreshadow anything because it'd be sure sweet to get a goal or two here, win it in 60 minutes. But if it takes 65, it takes That's 65. Right. Now we're going to have a little ice repair here as that peg is uh, kind of broken free here. They're possibly going to have to re-drill the hole. Gives us a chance to say that last week the Student Athlete Advisory Committee hosted its annual Hoops for Hunger three-on-three basketball tournament. This event supports less fortunate members of the greater Durham area by contributing food and monetary donations to the Cornucopia Food Pantry. There are many initiatives that the Wildcats support, including breast cancer awareness, suicide prevention, mental health, and more. That is our Kennebunk Savings Bank Wildcats in the community break. 
We'll take a break from the wind as well. 13.59 left in the third. UNH 1, Miami 1. This is Wildcat Hockey from Learfield. Face off to the left of Robinson after all is said and done. The net is back in its proper place. UNH from its own zone trying to chip out and successfully in doing so as McKinnon finds McAdams. McAdams can't quite get around the check of Russell, but does control the puck. Wheels and deals, curls to the slot, a shot off the chest of the netminder, bounces back to the left wing circle. Uhelski didn't have a good look after it. And Wildcats can control. It's out in the slot again. Van Riemsdyk forehander. And that one was blocked by Bachman. And then cleared off the near side glass by Laval. Van Riemsdyk right back on it. Diagonal feed McAdams. Gains the line left wing, but he's one on four. Lost it. Green controls for Miami. Cross ice pass. Right on the tape of Dashke. Back to Bachman. And a drive that goes wide. Went glove side on Robinson but missed the net. Blackburn gets spun around but still controls. Try to go diagonal and this will be an icing call with 12.57 left in the third period. Time for a live stat update brought to you by UNH Analytics and Data Science. Well, with all those shots in the first two periods, 40 total, we've played over seven minutes of the second period and we've had just four shots. Two to two is the shot stat here in the third. Live stat update brought to you by UNH Analytics and Data Science. Find out more at unh.edu slash analytics. Face off to Robinson's right, puck behind the goal. Barrier to it. He'll chip it for Nazarian far side. Melnick on the four check is really making things difficult for Varrier. Near side, it'll be Boyd who finds it to center ice. Blackburn could not get around Dashke. Center ice, it's loose. Varrier back to it, and he'll just lift it into the far corner of the Miami zone. On the four check, Nazarian leads the way along with Grasso, but Miami will break it out. Hit Gruden skate just outside the Wildcat line. Red Hawks send it in, forcing Wise back behind his own goal. Wise will stick handle through the center zone. Nice backhand feed, finds Nazarian. Nazarian to Grasso. He shoots, first one blocked, follow-up went wide. Glove side near post. Couple of chances again for Grasso, skating with Wise and Nazarian that time. And there will be a whistle behind the play with 11.59 remaining. And we're going to have our first penalty of the third period. That's a hooking call on Nazarian. Kind of must have been behind the play. The trailing referee made the call. Here's a big, big moment here for both these clubs. Miami will be on the power play for the fourth time. And the Wildcats have to kill a, kill a shorthanded situation here. Under 12 minutes left to play in the third. Miami 0 for 3 on the man advantage, but Nazarian slammed his stick as he entered the penalty box in frustration. He knows his team now in a bind at the 8-0-1 mark of the third. Face off in the New Hampshire zone. It's on the near boards. Dashke peels it off. Dashke's got some space. Cross ice pass. Mahalik is shot, and that misses the net. Bachman, left wing. Now to Dashke, wheels, deals, drops it right circle, return pass, intercepted by Van Riemsdyk as Gilling didn't have much on it. Van Riemsdyk races into the Miami zone left side. Backhands it for Blackburn who couldn't handle it, hit off his left skate in the circle. Blackburn still battles on the forward check to keep the puck in the Miami zone and the Wildcat fans show their approval. Dasky still having a difficult time against Blackburn, but Miami stays patient. Center ice, Blackburn almost took it away again. He does create a turnover. It's Wise at center ice, and Wise backs it up. 
to Gildon. Gildon headman feed misses Grasso, but that's okay. All the way down to the opposite corner. Wow, what a tour de force for Liam Blackburn figuring in the Wildcat goal tonight, scoring it and having a great penalty kill. Here's Melna coming across right side, goes lateral on the dish to Gruden. Gruden backs it up, but there's no one there, so it's out to center ice where Hutton retrieves, gives to Russell. 45 seconds remaining on the Nazarian penalty. He was called for hooking at 801. Green, left boards, can't get around to Gildon. Check, Gildon expertly whirls and fires it down to the far boards. Well, not the uh, angle you usually look for, but Max Gildon hit it, fluttering the puck in between the two defensemen. 1-1, 10-25 to go in the third. Hutton to Gruden. Gruden can't get by Boyd. Check, and so here comes Vela, shorthanded. Vela moves in, forehand bid wide. Rebound is to the left of Uhelski, who went diving for it. Couldn't settle it down. Which team's on the power play here? It's Gruden moving in. Gives it to Hutton. Stick checked away by Boyd, but sets up a shot from Gruden in the inner part of the right circle, but he missed the net. It hit the glass. Vela unable to clear. Back to the half wall. Miami control. Green back to Hutton, left wing. Catch her back at full strength, but the puck's still in the UNH zone as it went right between the circles. Ends up down in the left corner. Green got tripped up. Getting to the puck is Verrier. He'll clear it out. Fragona comes racing in, but pivoting away from him is Russell. He sets up Corbett. Corbett skates in, gains the Wildcat zone, left wing. Winds behind the net, still handles right side. Reverses direction at the goal line. Now passes to the point. Extra pass to Rimshaw, four-hander. Boyd got in the way, back to Rimshaw. Throws one wide, right corner. Crowder has it, right wing boards. His shot goes through. Robinson a save, and he closes the pads. Easy down there, Matt. Don't draw a penalty now. We do have a penalty coming up. What is Miller calling? As Matt Dawson got into it a little, little bit with a Red Hawk right there in the crease, but this is going to be a Red Hawk penalty for interference or obstruction interference. Wow, returning the favor. Here's a golden chance for the Cats now. As Brian Hawkinson sits down at the 11.42 mark, we'll have a Unitil power play coming up for the Wildcats. Unitil energy for life. And looks like we're going to take our mid-period break to clean up the ice. So we'll take a break as well. UNH won. Miami won. 9-18 left third period. This is Wildcat Hockey from Learfield. All right, guys, back to you. Wentworth Douglas Hospital with campuses in Dover, Portsmouth, and Lee is the Seacoast Leading Medical Center and the official hospital of UNH Athletics. Learn more at WDHospital.com. Wentworth Douglas Healthcare with heart. It's a Unitil power play for the Wildcats in a 1-1 game, 9-18 remaining in regulation. Wildcats' one goal did come on a power play. One for four on the night. It was a Blackburn strike at 14.39 of the first from Van Riemsdyk. We'll see here in the third if the Cats can earn their first lead. Crowd is into it. It'll be great to have the students back from their Thanksgiving break for next Saturday's game against Providence on 4-H night next Saturday night. Get your tickets, unhwildcats.com. Gildon to Nazarian. Nazarian throws it across for Grasso. His shot missed the net. Oh, he was there open on the back door. Excellent setup. Crookshank to Gildon. Blackburn left circle. Blackburn spins away from a check. Playing it down low. Nazarian now moving in front. Crookshank shot save. Grasso score! Patrick Grasso finally! How sweet it is. Two to one Wildcats with 8.55 left in the third. <laughs> Call me a seer, Mike, but I just tweeted out. Grasso hasn't scored yet. This could be the time. And he does. 
He works so hard in this power play, getting two opportunities, and this one he goes top shelf. Oh, up over the goalie on the forehand side. Nobody's more relieved than Patrick, and everybody on the bench is high-fiving the junior, the red shirt sophomore. Oh, my, that's a big goal for Patrick. Now if the Cats can build on that. After his phenomenal freshman season, as the puck is sent into the Wildcat zone at Robinson Gloves last year, injuries kept him to a very limited amount of games. His last goal was scored December 10th of last year against Merrimack. Only had two goals, but the redshirt sophomore from Ankeny, Iowa, breaks through. And what, what about the work of the freshman Crookshank to get in front and have the initial play that sets up Grasso for the putback? Well, the talent of some of these freshmen are really coming out now. It, times have been tough with a few wins here and there uh, for the Wildcats. And, uh, but you see the, guy, the, the, the guys like Angus Crookshank, Jackson Pearson, Eric Esposito really playing a big role and playing well. Well, that takes the weight off Grasso's shoulders. and Everyone here rooting for him, or at least all the guys in blue and white. Here's Bachman, a quick snapper from the top of the left circle, but Robinson denies with a glove, and we'll get a faceoff, 8.35 left. Yeah, Bachman showing he's so crafty and quick. I tell you, I, I am so impressed with the way he uses the edges of his blades. He, he carves his edges like nobody else. can get speed going real quickly, and can get off shots rapidly as well. Well, Bachman erased the Wildcats 2-1 to one lead last night. Here's a shot through traffic by Russell, and that's broken up. We certainly realize there's a lot of time to go. The UNH will not count its chickens. Here's Blackburn moving in. He winds a drive. It was blocked by Russell. Ends up behind the goal line. Squirts out in front, but there's Hutton to take it away for Miami. Red Hawks in transition. Hutton takes a check into the Wildcat bench from Nazarian. That UNH power play so outstanding here tonight. Both their goals have come with the man advantage. Wildcat players down in the corner. That's Gildon. Grasso a steal in the far circle of the defensive zone. He'll skate it out and then chip it to the Miami end as we go under eight minutes left in the third. Two to one. UNH the only assist on Grasso's goal. Given a Crookshank. And here's McAdams with a blast in the zone. Sato a follow-up left circle. Save Uhelski. McAdams from the right, Sato from the left. Katz is out there flying. Miller delivers a check on Gruden in the near boards. Yeah, right now it's about keeping your feet moving, just like uh, Brendan Van Reems like said after the first period. Keep the feet moving and good things will happen, and that's what UNH has to do here with the remaining seven and a half minutes. Dawson for McAdams in his own end, kept in, though, by Miami. It's Green, left wing. Green moves in. Forehander through congestion bounces off McKinnon to the near Corden corner. Gruden got it back. On to Melnick's stick. Turns, has it on his forehand. Hit a stick. Bounce over the crossbar. Ends up on the end boards. But Miami continues to cycle. Gruden to the right side. One-timer. Dashke and a sliding block by Sato. Wildcats desperate to clear. Miller unable to do so. It's held in by Green. He threw him right into the body of Miller who was down. Puck goes from the right circle to the left. Dashke gets to it. Goal line extended. Looking to play it back. Up the boards. Backhanded deeper behind the net. Out in front of Robinson, but it's stolen by the Wildcats and then cleared by McAdams. Some good puck moving by Miami, and they're right back into the zone. Dashke, no backhanded. Right corner. Going after it, Soroki. On the cycle, Johnson. And it comes up for a one-timer. Knocked down. There's a glove in the Wildcat net. Now, Miami glove somehow found its way behind Robinson. That's a new one for me. Here's Vela moving in right side. Vela crashes the net. He shoots, and he scores! The captain, Marcus Vela, short side, and the Wildcats lead 3-1. to one. Oh, The Wildcats desperately needed to get the defenseman off the ice. They finally get it out to center ice, and Marcus Vela, he worked so hard to get the puck lock down the right wing side, and uh, what looked like he was off balance, gained the puck, over the blue line and goes in and into the faceoff circle, five hole, and uh, he scores. Angus Crookshank takes out the goalie who's slow to get up. Big goal, great job by Marcus Vela, the captain leading the way. Actually, it was Vela who crashed into the goalie, not Crookshank. But uh, wow, excitement here in the Whittemore Center as they take a two goal lead. The senior captain from Burnaby, British Columbia, fourth goal of the season. The Wildcats needing 
goal scorers. They entering the weekend, they said this top line has been great, and you want to keep the idea of Pearson, Nazarian, Kelleher together. Well, Kelleher injured. He's out of the lineup. Voila. You get Vela from that second line scoring. Liam Blackburn from that third line. Patrick Grasso, who's been playing on that first line, replacing Kelleher. Two power play tallies. And now we are going to have a video review. Well, I think that what this is about is uh, at what point did Marcus Vela hit the goaltender? I think the puck was well into the net already. And that came after the play. I don't think I'd be surprised if Vela would pick up a two-minute penalty. The way things have been called here tonight, I'm not, I wouldn't be surprised to see that happen, but it's going to be a good goal. That was already well into the net when he made contact. But your point's well taken. A goal followed by a shorthand is still very good, but then you have to be on your heels here. Two-goal advantage. On the scoreboard, it still reads 2-1 to one as they want to confirm that he scored first. Meanwhile, they're going to work on the net on the near side. So it's been a busy period for the Whittemore Center Rinks crew. They had to fix Mike Robinson's goal, and now they'll do the same for Jordan Uhelski. And good to see Uhelski up. He appeared to be pretty shaken up after that sequence. Yeah, I, I don't know. He might have been going for an Oscar on that one. He didn't get hit too hard. A little bit of acting going on there, but, yeah, you don't like to see anybody go down in the heap. But... Uh, now, well, tense moments here to find out exactly what is going to happen with the call. I, I can only speculate as to why they're reviewing, but I can't see them overturning this goal. Wentworth Health Partner, Seacoast Orthopedics and Sports Medicine in Summersworth and Lee, New Hampshire, is one of the largest providers of orthopedic care on the Seacoast and in the state of New Hampshire. Learn more at sosmed.org. I think the video review has come to its conclusion as Jeffrey Miller and John Gravelisi put their helmets back on. It is a good goal. Now is there a penalty? Well, there is. Bella's in the box. <laughs> so uh, that is that call, I believe, is going to stand. Puck was in the goal, and Vela made contact with the goalie. All kinds of activity here in this third period. UNH has scored twice with a man advantage. Miami thus far. It's been held 0 for 4 on its power play, and they'll get two minutes here at the 13:49 mark of the third, trailing it 3 to 1. I think UNH will take that trade off, get a goal up on the board, a two-goal lead. They've killed four straight penalties, so uh, the Red Hawks have not been able to convert on their power play. So let the Wildcat penalty killers have a go at it. Hopefully, it'll kill off a couple more minutes of this game. But long way to go. Mike Souza's often used the coaching joke. It's a race to three. If that's the case tonight, the Wildcats got there first. Last night, three wasn't enough for a win as these teams played to the 3-3 deadlock. Well, that Wildcats last PK almost energized this building. Pete really seemed to swing momentum. We'll see if Miami can get it back. They get to the Wildcat line. Diagonal dump in from Melnick from the right blue line to the left corner. Melnick's back on it, looking for Hutton at the left point. Hutton stick handles, moves to the point, works to the cross. Russell back to Hutton for a one-time blast. Save off the top of the sweater by Robinson. Melnick again, right wing boards. Out to the point. There's Russell. Dangles gives to Hutton another shot that goes ricocheting high off the glass. And that Karam carries it to center ice. Van Riemsdyk disrupting play at center, but it's shoveled aside as Gruden was able to find Melnick in the corner, only to see Wise step in the play and then dish it down ice. Yeah, I like to see Brennan Van Riemsdyk out there. He's got that long reach uh, for the penalty kill, and Anthony Wise with his speed and physicality, both doing a great job. Russell finds Bachman. Bachman with speed into the zone, right wing side. Gilling, Gilling bottom of the right circle in front, backhand shot, save, rebound. Gilling got upended, and the puck ends up under Mike Robinson's glove with 4.51 remaining in this third period. 41 seconds left on the Vela penalty. Now Joe Sacco out there, I think he touched it right to his goal. He had some space and time to just slide it to Robinson, who would cover it up. Smart play there by the sophomore Joe Sacco out of Reading, Mass. Much like Patrick Grasso, frustrating second year for him as he had to be on the mend, the two of them with their shoulder injuries 
for rehabbing all year long and now vital parts of the team in their third season on the UNH campus. Here's a turnover by Miami. Grasso comes up with it. He'll backhand to the far corner for Blackburn. Wildcats will kill off some penalty time as Blackburn doing his best just to get a skate in there, pin the puck along the kick plate on the left boards and frustrate Miami. Mahalik will finally peel it off. Ten seconds remaining on the Red Hawk power play. Bachman comes in onside, plays it behind the net to the far corner right side. Gilling gives chase. Dashke jabs at it. Cats have killed the penalty. Vela's out of the box. But Miami still with some offensive zone possession. Van Riemsdyk can take away, but it's reclaimed by Gilling. Right wing. Gilling curls to the half wall. Down low to Dashke. Absorbs a hit from Varrier. Varrier and Dashke both go down. Backman gets to it. Tries to play into the blue paint. But Robinson sliding to his right. Able to cover up. 3.51 left in the third. 3-1 Wildcats. I think Varrier dodged a bullet there. He could have easily been called for holding as he pulled down the Red Hawk player behind the net. Had him all wrapped up. A little uh, yank of the jersey there. Dashke, what's he doing down there below the... Uh, Red line at uh, Miami throwing everything forward, and they're going to take a timeout right now to talk about it. So we'll take a timeout as well and breathe. It's 3 to 1 Wildcats, 3.51 left. Stay with us. This is Wildcat Hockey from Learfield. Back to you. UNH students and alumni get your instantly issued service credit union visa debit card at any SCU branch or online and get access to online banking and mobile apps with remote check deposit. Visit their on-site ATMs at the UNH Fieldhouse here at the Whittemore Center and inside Wildcat Stadium. Empty net for the Red Hawks as uh, they skate out of their timeout. So 3.41 left to play. And now uh, the Wildcats are going to see a barrage of red coming at them. Let's see if the Wildcats can get that opening to uh, seal the deal here with an empty netter. Face off to the right of Robinson. Last night UNH used the extra attacker to tie it up. Here's Hutton, a blast on the left side. That caught somebody skate out in front of Robinson. Ends up on the far boards. Blackburn chips it out. Ends up on the Miami side. Hutton will race back to it. Looking for Green. Green will shovel it behind his own net. Hutton, a breakout from the near side. Melnick, centering feed. Nets thrown to the Wildcat zone. Gildon knocked it down, takes a shot, and he scores from his own defensive near circle. An empty net goal. Max Gildon, 4-1 Wildcats. Ah, oh, it's been such a long time coming, but I think that is the icing on the cake here tonight. Empty netter, Enrico Blasi pulls the uh, the goalie real early with almost four minutes remaining. Max Gildon makes no doubt about it. 175-foot goal for the sophomore defenseman. The Cats lead 4-1. to one. There'll be no assist on the play. A season-high fourth goal for the Wildcats. It has been a struggle, but all kinds of things are coming together here for the Wildcats as we hit the end of November, playing a nationally ranked team, leading by three goals, trying to get their first win since October 27th, a 3-2 overtime win against Vermont. Here comes Vela, looking for more. Van Reems like he shoots, save made by Uhelski. Vela will backhand it behind the Miami net again. Near side, Johnson, he'll take a check into the glass from Miller. Graham brings it back to Dashke. Dashke's pass over the stick of Johnson, allowing Gildon to get there. Gildon, after missing last night's game, scoring his second goal of the season for the empty netter. Third period, Grasso, Vela, and now Gildon spreading the wealth. Uh, they're your leaders of this team getting in on the score sheet. And big, too, here in the third period. 
And Blackburn's played so well, he skates across the Miami line looking for Grasso, but getting a stick in there to break it up was Crowder. Leads Corbett the other way. Corbett toe drags, dangles, throws one wide of the net on the stick side of Robinson. And what a job by Robinson after Ty Taylor played so well yesterday. Mike Robinson looking to earn his second win of the season. Two minutes left here at the wit. Four to one Wildcats. Puck is pressed along the far board. Soroki has jumped into the play. And as Blackburn will lift it out and it goes out of play. Stay with us for the post-game show. Kendra Middleton will talk to one of the Wildcats and we'll have all the highlights plus out-of-town scores and a look ahead to a big Hockey East weekend next week as the Cats get back to conference play against Providence. And the Cats will hopefully have Mr. Moe with them. They can finish off this game here with 151 left to play. They'd skate out of this weekend with a win and a tie. Onto a big series against Providence, who themselves have been a little up and down this year. Penalty kill went five for five. Power play scored a couple of goals. UNH rising to the occasion without two of their primary players in Kelleher and Mass, both out with injury. This one just feels nice. Although we still have 125 left for Miami. Rimshaw, top of the left circle, plays it down low. Backhanded in front, dangerous area. Well, a lot of Red Hawks are there. The Wildcats putting bodies, though, in front of Robinson as Sacco, Boyd, Gildon all converge. And the Wildcats will skate out with it. It's Justin Fragona. Clears the red line. Sends into the right corner. Sato with it. Has Crowder trailing him. Crowder takes him down. Fans want a call. A minute left. Hawkinson skating through neutral. Fragona lifts his stick. And then using his paddle, Robinson swipes it to the near side boards. Corbett, left half wall, works it in deep. It's back to Russell at the point. Russell winds it behind the net. Corbett, goal line extended right, out to the point. Hutton, Hutton throws one in, kick save Robinson. Fragona has it, the chance of UNH. From the pep band, the Wildcat faithful. As the Cats ice it, 30 seconds left, but this one... This is one the Wildcats are going to savor between now and next Saturday night when we're back for 4-H night. Yeah, that's uh, they love playing here at the home ice, and it'll be great to get the uh, student body back on campus, back in this barn, and well, maybe the Wildcats can uh, play a great game down at Providence at Schneider Arena, a nice place to play as well, nice place to broadcast from and get things going here. Cats win the faceoff, come out of the zone with Sato. Sato by his lonesome calls all the way to the Miami end and then he'll chip it to the corner. Nice job by Kohei. 15 seconds left. Russell, cross ice, gloved down by Crookshank, but they call all sides with 10.4 seconds remaining. UNH will improve to two, six and four. And Miami, which came in hoping to get its first 10 win campaign before December 1st in four years, has come away with no wins. A tie last night. And they will fall here to the Wildcats today. Well, the Wildcats, the last team in hockey East to pick up two overall victories this year. Esposito throws one wide of the net. But on a day where the Hockey East Association was having a tough time with out-of-conference play, the Wildcats have risen to the occasion and knocked off number 19 Miami by a final score of 4-1. to one. Four different goal scorers for the Cats. Liam Blackburn, Patrick Grasso, Marcus Vela, and then Max Gildon. And the uh, fans appreciate the effort the Wildcats put in this weekend with a good round of applause as they head to their cars. The two coaches meet at center ice. The teams will shake hands. Uh, good weekend here. Bringing in the team from the NCHC, ranked number 19 in the country. And the Wildcats have upset them and picked up a very important win. And things have now proved that the Wildcats can play with teams like this and not lose by a goal or tie them. They can pick up a W. Win and a tie this weekend. Good uh, 60, well, 125 minutes of action this weekend, and they get a big win here tonight. The storyline changes from playing with these good teams to beating the yeah. good teams. We knew the Wildcats could get over the hump, and they did so today. UNH improves to 2, 6, and 4. Miami slips to 9, 6, and 1. We'll recap it all during the postgame show of a celebratory Whittemore Center. 4 1 the final Wildcats over the Miami Red Hawks. This is Wildcat Hockey from Learfield. <laughs>